my father. I bless and lift your name. Oh, you blessed Savior. You are worthy of my praise. There is none like you. And the four corners of the earth, you are the sunshine, holy, worthy, beautiful. You are Jesus. You are Savior. Can we lift our hands and let this song just twice to him? Let us glorify Emmanuel. We will glorify Emmanuel. 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 Let us glorify. Let us glorify Emmanuel. Let us glorify Emmanuel, Emmanuel, Emmanuel. Let us, let us glorify Emmanuel, glorify Emmanuel, Emmanuel. Holy Spirit, we ask that let there be a release of uncommon grace, uncommon glory, signs, wonders, miracles, an outstanding move of your prophetic unction in Jesus' name. 
clap those hands and give God glory glorify your name in all the earth glorify your name we will glorify Glorify your name today in Jesus' name. Break your Bible to 1 Kings chapter 18. We'll read from verse 1 to verse 46. From verse 41 to 46. I'll read verse 41. You read verse 42. I'll read 43. You read 44. When we get to 46, we'll read it together. 1 Kings chapter 18. I'll read from verse 41 to 46. So I'll read the 41. You read 42. And we read 46 together. And Elijah said unto Ahab, Get thee up, eat and drink, for there is a sound of abundance of rain. Read verse 42. And said to his servants, Go up now, look toward the sea. And he went up and looked and said, there is nothing. And he said, go again seven times. And it came to pass in the meanwhile that the heaven was black with clouds and wind. And there was a great rain. And Ahab rode and went to Jezreel. Let's do verse 46 together. And the hand of the Lord was on Elijah. And he girded up his loins and ran before Ahab to the entrance of Jezreel. Unction for speed. Unction for speed. A believer is not expected to be competitive, but it is erroneous for a believer to be stagnant. It is a crime for you to use people as yastic for your acceleration, but it's equally a crime for you to be with them for too long. Anyone that does not improve on his fathers is not supposed to be alive. The reason for breathing, the reason for breath, the reason you are still living is because heaven expects you to be an improvement on your fathers. To be an improvement on your predecessors. Elijah one day came out in 1 Kings 19 verse 4 and said, Suffer me not to live, for I am not better than my father. So, not being better than your fathers has denied you license for existence. In Psalm 119 verse 99, David said, he said, I know better than my teachers. I have more understanding that my teachers, why? Thy testimonies are my meditation. The place where we read, the Bible says that Elijah said to Ahab, 
after three and a half years of scarcity, after three and a half years of famine, he suddenly said to him, there is a sound, eat and drink. There is a sound of abundance of rain. You are expecting abundance. You are expecting rain. Eat and drink. While he, Elijah, went to pray for the abundance he was expecting. You don't stay in pleasure when expecting pleasure. You can't, you can't move from pleasure to pleasure. It's an error for you to expect an outstanding future, an uncommon tomorrow, and you are waiting for that future to meet you in pleasure. I wish I was talking to somebody here. How can you be expecting rain and you are eating and drinking? How can you be expecting a visitation of God and your hand is folded in celebration? You are waiting for celebration in celebration. Elijah said, no, that's not the principle. The principle is for us to get celebration, there is a mountaintop experience. There are so many people, when they see you praying, when they see you fasting, when they see you waiting on God, back to back you are praying. And sometimes they look at you like you've lost your mind. You've not lost your mind. You are spending time with God because you have had a sound of abundance of rain. There is something you are expecting that determines the price you pay. What you expect from God is what determines the price you pay you cannot be in pleasure like others and not end under pressure like them for those who know what they are expecting for those who know what they are believing God for there is no price that is too much to pay when you know what you want from God no price is too much to pay when you know the future that you are believing God to assess no price Are not going through a problem, you are going through a phase. There's no problem. Sarah wasn't barren, God was only teaching them patience. Sarah was not barren. The writers of the Bible could have put that in modern English for you to understand why she didn't have a child, but Sarah was not barren. Sarah was heavily fruitful, fertile. Abraham was heavily fertile. So, what is this man talking about? When Abraham lied that Sarah was his wife, was his sister in the house of Abimelech. Quickly, God made Abimelech impotent. If Sarah was barren, God would make Abimelech impotent. God knew that any attempt, baby, we enter. If you say, maybe the Abimelech was fruitful, Abraham was not fruitful. The next chapter, Abraham got Hagar pregnant. So if you say it was not the woman's fault, before you say it was the man's fault, Agar took him. The problem is, when the devil cannot stop the promise, he corrupts it. Satan knew he couldn't stop Abraham from having a child. So what he said, even if you are going to have a child, it should not be Isaac, it should be Ishmael. What the devil wants is to corrupt a blessing. What the devil wants is to pervert a blessing. Satan knows it's too late for him. There is a word spoken over your life. There is a word spoken over your family. It's too late for the devil. He can't stop the plan of God. He can't stop the purpose of God. What God has said about your life shall receive fulfillment. That devil is a liar. There is a word of God about your family. There is a word from God about your marriage. There is a word from God about your home. There is a word from God about your health. And I came to activate that word. I came to activate that word. I came to activate that word. I came to activate.
activate that word it will come to pass i said 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 it will come to pass somebody shout fire yeah, 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 yeah. You are expecting rain and you are eating and drinking? There's nothing. The battle of your life is not, is not meeting your needs. No. Meeting your needs is the least of your battle. The battle of your life is making an impact on your world. Meeting your needs is too small. Paying your debt is too small. Here is Dr. Fide. When God wanted to change the status and make impact in the life of Peter, he said, take the net. But when he wanted to pay his bill, he said, take the hook. Your problem is not the problem. Your impact is the problem. He said to pay your bills, nothing. Take hook, don't take net. The net is too big for debt. Net is too big for debt. So all this rent, car, house, that's not your problem. Your problem is affecting your world. Is to live a life that Nigeria we know. There was a son of God. A Cameroon we know. There was a son of God. Ghana we know. There was a son of God. South Africa we know. There was a son of God. Malaysia we know. There was a son of God. Am I communicating here? My debt does not need a net. My debt needs a hook. But my impact to change my family story needs a net. Hear me, child of the living God. It is time to go to the mountain top. You cannot expect a great destiny with minimal sacrifice. You cannot expect a great destiny with minimal Is concluded. All God wants is for you to just take a little step. You know, First Corinthians one twenty. Can can you bring that up? First Corinthians one twenty. I think. First Corinthians one twenty. Is, is that it? Okay. Bring Second Corinthians one twenty. Yeah, I think it's Second Corinthians one twenty. Bring Second Corinthians one twenty. Bring it in the new international version. Bring it out in the new international version. I'm, I'm sure you should have it. Mm. Can James say all the words of God are in him, yea, and in him, amen, unto the glory of God. Hear this. Not amplified, new international. Okay, bring several version. For as many as are the promise of God, in Christ they are all answered, yes. So through him we say our amen. For whosoever the promise of God is in him is the yea. We are also through him is the amen to the glory of God. I'm looking for the international version. There is a way the NIV puts it. Whatever God has promised us gets stamped with the yes of Jesus. In him, this is what we preach and pray. The great amen. Now listen to this. Also, message picked it. God's yes and our, go back to the message. Go back to the message. Go back to the message translation. God's yes and our yes together. Gloriously. God is not in charge of your life. God is not in charge of your life. God is not in charge of your life. God is in control, but he's not in charge. If 
God was in charge of your life, you will not have had that last failure. Because there's no failure in him. If God was in charge of your life, you would not have had that last disappointment. There's no disappointment in him. God puts you in charge. And whatever you do, the actions you take is what he controls. The last accident that happened on the highway, that wasn't God. Man was in charge, but he didn't do the right thing, so Satan took advantage of it. So what am I saying? It is the step you take that God acts. God, God is just God. It's you that, come on courage, come. Now, you are going, I know you're going to bring scripture, but say, Papa, if you say God, stand here. If you say God does not do anything, face me. If you say God does not do anything, how come the Bible says, draw near to God, and he will draw? Eh, so God moves. God doesn't move. For example, this is God. He's, I'm giving an um, illustration. Let's say this is God. The Bible says, draw near to God, and he'll be near to you. Go far from God, he'll be far from you. Who moved? Did he move? So when you draw near to God, he will draw nearby. He, the proximity will be close. When you go far from God, he is far from you. Who moved? He doesn't move. God can't move. You know why? He occupies everywhere. Where is he moving to? Movement is a cessation. It's a cessation of, from, of a step from one location to another. So when you move from here, you are no more there. When you move from there, you are no more here. David said, should I go to the mountain? It's there. Is, is, should I go to the valley? It's there. Underneath the sea? is there. God can't move because he occupies. So it is you that moves. Eat and drink. There are so many people who are expecting rain. Rather than praying down the rain, they are eating and drinking. <laughs> you spend time. Do you know why you spend time in the in the place of prayer? To expect the, the, when you're expecting the rain, your prayer is not to bring the rain because in due season the rain comes. Your prayer is to prepare you for what God has prepared for you. The prayer, the time, can I say this to you? It's not as though it's your prayer that actually makes things happen. God wants you to pray to a level when you are spiritually prepared for what he has prepared for you and the cloud will break. How many of you know that there is no rain in the atmosphere? The mystery of rain is called evaporation from the earth. Is that true? Evaporation from the earth. And when the cloud is full, <laughs> rain comes. So there is evaporation before renation. Renation. <laughs> evaporation before what? Renation. So when the, when the cloud is full, when you have prayed and prayed and your cloud is full, it empties itself on the earth. Eat and drink. I'm, I'm laying the foundation. Because there are so many of us, there are dimensions of God we already assess. But the problem with the body of Christ and with most Christians is that they listen to the devil. And can I tell you something about the devil? The devil never shows you the many things you already have. He keeps showing you the one thing you don't have. Satan never showed Eve all the gardens that God gave to them. Satan never showed Eve all the opportunities God gave to them. Satan never showed Eve that God put Adam in charge. Satan never showed Eve that God gave Adam power to 
you know, name the gardens, name the animals. All set and showed Eve was that tree of good of knowledge and evil satan never shows you that you slept last night and woke up healthy satan never shows you that you are well and you are okay satan never shows you how god delivered you from that accident from that crash satan never shows you all that god has done for you all the devil tells you is that you are not married all the devil tells you is that you don't have money all the devil tells you is that you don't have this you don't have that satan never shows you all the multitude of things God has done for you. Oh, the devil shows you. Is that one thing? That one thing. I was asking a doctor, I said, how much for oxygen for one hour? And he told me. And I did quick mass. I multiplied it by 24. I multiplied it by 7. I multiplied it by 4 weeks. I multiplied it by 52 weeks. So I saw the millions that God takes care of each of us every month, every year. And yet we are angry over one little thing that we think he has not done. Taking care of you. And there are some of you, you breathe more than others. Your own oxygen is terrible. You, you, you have the nose of 17 people. Am I talking to somebody here? You are greedy with everything, including breathing. Am I talking here? Have you seen some people, they are not sick, they are with you. You are in the next room, you can hear their breath. <sighs> that is the oxygen of nine people that one person is consuming. And God never said, pay for it. Am I talking to somebody here? He never said, pay for it. And you are angry because of a miscarriage. You are angry because you lost a job. You are angry because you lost an opportunity. Unity. You are angry because of a rejection. You are angry because somebody broke your heart. Somebody say speed. Say speed. Say speed. There's a difference between rush and speed. Rush. Is attempting acceleration through the mechanics of the flesh. Attempting acceleration through the mechanics of the flesh. But speed is operating the dynamics of trafficking through the help of the spirit. The dynamics of trafficking. Sakratiaba. On the wings. Of the spirit what is happening in our ministry is not a big deal the big deal is where is happening you didn't hear what I just said what is happening is not a big deal but where the location where is happening is what makes it a deal through the dynamics child of God. I'm laying the foundation as I go in now. What God is doing is actually all this prayer you are praying is to prepare you. It's to prepare you. You know, the spirit of Sodom, the problem with Sodom, the church today has moved into the dimension of Sodom. Because the spirit of Sodom is the spirit of mismanagement. The spirit of Sodom is the spirit where they downplay the supernatural. And that's what's happening now. The spirit of Sodom is when they downplay the supernatural. They were ready to have intercourse with angels. They downplay the supernatural. And what provokes me is that the people that downplay the supernatural are children, youths, young people. They see a manifestation. They say, ah. And anytime you deny or you argue with the supernatural, you delete yourself from the list of champions. You delete yourself from the list of champions. Am I talking to somebody here? All the Paul, the Elijahs, all those great people, the Bible says that day without us should not be made perfect. They prayed to see our day. They prayed to see our day. God used them to prepare, to champion, to midwife this move we are seeing. 
all of a sudden Mary becomes pregnant without the intercourse of a man and a woman. There was no bodily connection, no copulation, no sexual contact. And suddenly she becomes pregnant and everybody is shouting, not knowing there was a woman who was laboring behind the scene. Her name was Hannah. For 80 years, she was laboring behind the scene. And God knows that as a woman, she will have certain limitations. God put a man also. His name was Simon. And they were laboring. Hannah was a virgin. She was laboring for a virgin. Because you have to labor for your kind. You have to labor for your type. And she was laboring and praying. Expecting a miracle to break forth. 80 years. And when she saw that manifestation, he said, now my eyes have seen. Nothing just happens. There are midwives behind the scene who have paid the price that is why God did not heal did not heal Jairus daughter first God healed the woman with the issue of blood first because he knew that if Jairus daughter is healed he will need a woman in her life to teach her and tailor her on womanhood so God had to heal the woman with the issue of blood first and move ahead to heal Jairus daughter so that when she's healed because the Bible said Jairus daughter meaning she had no mother Jarius daughter meaning the man wasn't married she needs a woman in her life so that is why God had to heal the, the woman first to prepare her so that when the girl rises up from dead she can have a mentor who will teach her in the things of God am I speaking to somebody here every move was midwifed every manifestation must be midwifed for us to deny and to argue the manifestation it means we are making mockery of the prize of our predecessors of the prize of men who came before us pastors are faking miracles and so bloody what they won't fake it if there was no real so why are you going to now focus on nonsense and deny yourself the supernatural what makes you so notice the fake if you are not fake yourself to he that is pure things are pure When your mentality is full of negativity, it reveals the content and color of your heart. That's why you don't spend your time arguing with people who don't believe certain dimension. Don't waste your energy. It is the content of their heart. Am I communicating? They that there's nothing you can do. When you stay too long in darkness, you start seeing. I'm not even there are some people that are so comfortable in the toilet they can even reply messages in the toilet in the restroom they will sit down in the toilet and they are chatting they are now so comfortable with all kinds of aroma that they, are, they will sit in the restroom some of you are looking at me you can't even shout because you know I understand I understand I understand don't worry <laughs> I understand Am I talking to somebody here? Am I talking to somebody? Eat and drink, for I hear. If you must enjoy speed, watch what you hear. Number one, watch what. There are things you must not hear. Refusing to hear bad news doesn't mean you are not current. It means you are protecting your content. Refusing to hear bad news doesn't mean you are not current. You are only protecting the content and color of your heart. What do you hear? What do you hear? Jesus was speaking to his people one time in Luke 8, 18. He said, take heed how you hear. It's not just what you hear, only how you hear. Exodus chapter 6, verse 1, the Lord said to Moses. Exodus 7, 1, the Lord said to Moses. Exodus 8, 1, the Lord said to Moses. Exodus 9, 1, the Lord said to Moses. Exodus 10, 1, the Lord said to Moses. Exodus 11, 1, the Lord said to Moses. Exodus 12, 1, the Lord said to Moses. Exodus 13, 1, the Lord said to Moses. Exodus 14, 1, the Lord said to Moses. Exodus 15, and Moses sang. So what you hear, accumulation of information is what triggers celebration. Accumulation.
accumulation of information is what triggers celebration information is formation information is what is formation what you hear constantly you will soon become what you keep hearing you soon become one of the easiest way to be formed is to be informed so your your formation is on the bedrock and the premise of your information what do you hear do you hear god you can't you can't enjoy and assess acceleration without the prophetic and the prophetic is broad and i tell people that you must be detailed you see how do i teach you this now listen isaac was old his eyes were dim but his ears were sharp that's a prophetic realm there are people whose eyes are dim but their hearing is sharp and when your eyes are dim your hearing is sharp it would affect what you touch <laughs> he was touching Jacob thinking he was touching Esau yet he was hearing there are many people that actually had god but because they didn't see where he was sending them to it affects today what they are touching i had god tell me to go to lagos how come i'm not saying anything? you heard god but you never saw clearly so it affects what you are touching you are touching jacob thinking it is esau lord don't just open my ears open my eyes am i communicating here don't just open my ears open my eyes and that comes when you spend time in the presence of god there's no way your eyes can be open when you are addicted to the presence of elohim hey do you know one of the reasons why jacob could assess the information from rebecca it is because jacob was that child that stays at home isaac was that hunter child that was always outside he was always outside so he was not current with current information he was always outside so he could not assess the latest information but jacob was that child that stayed at home jacob so stayed at home that his mother actually taught him how to cook it was in the cooking that he got the best right of his brother he stayed at home and the mother opened and gave him an information on how to assess the venison from the father when you stay in the presence the holy ghost shows you access on how to please the father when you stay indoors the holy ghost gives you access on how to draw venison from the father as you spend time in the presence of God. he said through desire a man having separated himself intermediate with all wisdom Proverbs 18 and verse 1 intermediate with all wisdom what do you hear there are messages of generals my father and the lord has messages online i have messages i preached two years ago three years ago they're online if you google and check well you will see messages of charles finney written charles hunter messages that would build your life no you have never opened one but if they, if they ask you the latest information on social media you are aware messages that will impact you are there but you know you don't click on such and you are wondering why your life is the way it is what are you hearing what are you hearing there are so many of us we say, I just need to know what's going on. I just need to be abreast on what is happening. What guard your heart with all diligence. Proverbs 4.23. Out of it are the issues 
Jesus never said, let not your leg be troubled. Let not your hand. He said, let not your heart. Because whatever affects your heart crushes your life. I hear. Listen, what do you hear? Never attempt any new venture without a word from God. Never attempt any new vocation without a word from God. Never attempt any new vocation without a word from God. Until you hear him, don't take a step. Those that hear his command are always in demand. Those that hear his command are always in demand. Hearing heaven's command is what makes you a commander on earth. I might talk to somebody here. There are several kinds of people that run the surface of the earth. The Bible says the sons of Issachar were men because they had understanding of their time and their brethren were at their command. In life, there are two classes of people. There are commanders and there are comedians. There are those who are joking and playing away their life and there are those who are giving authority to the Urims and the Tumims. Those who are operating on that divine intelligence. What do you hear? You may not be on the pulpit. You may not be a frontliner. You may be at the background as a midwife. But connecting to God. If not the scriptures, who would have known that there was a Hannah praying for the birth of Christ behind the scene? There are so many of us who are on the frontliners and we have left our place of communion. With big title, no prayer life. Big office, no study life. We have left our place in Jerusalem. In Acts chapter 7 and chapter 8. In Jerusalem, the city of God. People stoned Stephen. Saul supervised it. Stephen was stoned and he died in the city of peace. Somebody's peace was taken away. He died. No matter, your, no matter what you profess, Satan will attempt you. He died with the big names in that city. Somebody was stoned to death because they expected things to happen on their own. Stephen said, I saw Jesus. I see Jesus standing. Jesus does not stand. Jesus sits. He sits on the right hand of God. So for Jesus to be standing, he was on his way down to defend Stephen. But Stephen was not smart enough. Rather than make a declaration, he was being emotional and sentimental. Into the hand I commit my spirit. What? And they took him. Jesus remained standing. He was waiting for Paul to make a move. And as soon as Paul switched and was going to Damascus, Jesus that was already standing blocked him. He said, you did what you did. In Jerusalem but in Damascus there is a gatekeeper he is not a pastor he's just one quiet man they call him Ananias he's the gatekeeper of Damascus where are you going he blocked him he said who are you he said I am Jesus who you are persecuting it is hard to kick against the brick I am a rock it is hard to kick against me I am a rock and the Bible says, say, well, for just to let you know that um, levels have changed for now. Take your sight. Sir, there is no disability that is good, but blindness is the worst. You hear what I said? No disability is good. No disability is good. If somebody cannot walk, when something is about to hit him, he can shout out. But a man who cannot see, his case is complicated. Even if he's not misled and led to a wrong place. That is why Jesus never said, can the lame lead the lame? He never said, can the dumb lead the dumb? He never said, can the cripple lead the cripple? He said, can the blind? Because he knew that is the act. There was a gatekeeper that had no title. I don't want to be an apostle. 
I don't want to be a prophet. I'm not eager to be an evangelist. I'm not eager to be a teacher. I just want to be known in hell. I want to be known as one that troubles hell. I want to be known as one who has registered and stamped his name in the throne of grace. I want to be known as one who constantly stands on the throne. I don't want to be called a pastor. I don't want to be called a prophet. I don't want to be called a preacher. I just want to be a son of God, moving in power, moving in glory, not title. I want mantle. Men are looking for title, and God is looking for who to tie himself to. Men are looking for title. But God is looking for who to tie himself to. What are you hearing? You see, when you come to my presence, Hosea 14 verse 2, bring with you words. Contentless generation. Generation, scriptureless generation. The better Christians were Christians. Even after hearing the word of God in church, they go back home. Acts 17 11. The better Christians were more noble than the Christians in Thessalonica. They received the word of God with all readiness of heart and went back and searched if these things were so. What is your spirit man hearing? You want speed? Then you must, you must sift and be careful of the information. Am I communicating? Am I communicating? Word of God, you constantly hear. I hear! He brought the announcement because he heard it. But he waited. He waited to be sure that what he was seeing was what he heard. Lord, you have told me. Please show me. That's the problem we have. Many have heard, but they have not seen. I wish I was talking to somebody. Open down my eyes. Psalm 119 verse 18 that I may behold wondrous things. Somebody say open my eyes. Numbers 24 verse 3 Balaam, the man whose eyes are open open my eyes. Second Kings 6 17 open his eyes that he may see and his eyes were opened and he saw my God, Jeremiah 1 11 and 12. What seest thou? He said, I have seen an almond tree. He said, Thou hast seen where I will hasten. I will. So there is a connection between sight and speed. I will hasten my word to perform it. <laughs> My God, Jeremiah 24, 3, what seest thou? Zechariah 5, verse 2. Zechariah 4, verse 2. Amos 8, verse 2. Amos 7, verse 8. What seest thou? There's a level you walk with God and his voice becomes your steps. Do you know the Bible says in Genesis chapter 3? He said, and the voice of God came walking in the garden. Oh, you didn't get me. How many of you love the word? How many of you love the word of God? Hear me, put it down. The Bible said the voice of God came walking. Voice, voice was walking. Genesis chapter 3, is it verse 8 or 9? The voice walking in the garden. There's a level you hear God and his voice becomes your steps. Every step is under divine instruction. And, the and they heard the voice of God doing what? It wasn't God that was walking. It was his voice. They could hear the steps. There is a level you become so transfused, mingled with the voice of God, that every step is under by the leading, on the premise on the bedrock of a divine instruction. The Lord said to me some years ago in ministry, he said, don't do what is popular, do what is instructed. He said, don't do what is popular, do what is instructed. 
How many of you know there are people who started a relay race and they ran to the end? When they got to the end, they were told that they were disqualified. At the end. Why? They didn't go in line with the rules of engagement. At that point, they left their lane. They were running in someone's lane. Doing what someone does. Because he's popular, not because he's instructed. Even in medicines, there are departments. There are optometrists. There are gynecologists. There are pediatrists. There are departments. There are dentists. What do you hear? What do you hear? By the power of the Holy Spirit, your passion for the right information, I decree a baptism for the right information. A baptism of passion for the right information. A baptism of passion for the right information. If your amen is louder, you are the one I'm just talking to. So that you become, am I wasting your time? So that you make impact. That is the generation we are in. Impact. He said you are the sort of the earth. What does that mean? Influence. What sort does is to influence. Am I speaking here? You are the sort of the earth. Influence. The light of the world. Illumination. So you don't become like Elijah. A man that was so gifted but broke. Anytime there's a famine, it needs supernatural intervention to survive. With all the gifts of Elijah, every famine, it needed supernatural intervention. If it's not going to the brook chariot, God talked to one widow. But Elisha survived two famines, no supernatural intervention. Because Elisha was gifted and loaded. The only time he stayed in somebody's house, but it wasn't because he lacked accommodation. The Bible says he was passing by every day. Meaning he had a place he was staying. They were the ones that insisted. And when they met him, he looked at her. He said, let me talk to the king for you. In other words, you gave me a place, but I have you for Let me talk to the king for you. Why? He was gifted and loaded. He was a CEO of a company when they, when they called him. First Samuel 19, 19, when they cast the garments on him, he was, he had his own company. We have too many anointed and broke people. Talented and stranded. Gifted and broke. So it is possible to be anointed and be loaded. Financially loaded and spiritually solid. I wish I was talking to somebody right now. For the kingdom you can be blessed by god and still be on fire for god ask cornelius the man was loaded and yet fasted for four days dry he wasn't fasting for a problem there was no problem in his house he was fasting on the platform of fellowship angel began to trouble peter he said don't call this man come on that was against divine agenda the plan of god was that god will visit jerusalem first the holy ghost will pour out on jerusalem not the not the jew not, not the, 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 the the gentiles that was not the plan of god the divine timetable was that the spirit of god will come upon all the jews the gentile was an afterthought but somebody's hunger for god changed the program that's why Peter was surprised when he said, while he was talking to them, the Holy Ghost fell. Ha! Huh? Peter said, this is not the plan. This is not the agenda. S sir, it doesn't matter where you live. Hear me? Hear me? It doesn't matter where you live. It doesn't matter what stopped others. With a right heart and a willingness to pay price, you can change any story. With a right heart, and a willingness to pay the price. Nothing can stop you.
There are things you read in the Bible. There are things you are seeing with your eyes. There's anybody that they have tried to stop. It's me. There's nothing they have not done. But I'm firing from all cylinders. As they are doing their own, I'm doing my own. Do your work, I'm doing my work. In my own work, you don't exist. Am I talking to somebody here? Keep doing, do what you do. You have done it so much to a point it's no more making sense to anybody anymore. It's now obvious that it's an agenda. Please, I want to give you this counsel. You may have heard him. Beg him. Let him open your eyes. Jacob said, I, I, I know you instructed me to come here. Go to Bethel and dwell there. I know you told me. But please, I'm begging you. Tonight, open my eyes that I might see angels ascending and descending. Man of God, the angels were not descending and ascending. They were ascending and descending. They were not descending and ascending. They were ascending. and they, So the angels have always been around. They have always been around, but they needed an encounter to make them assess information and bring down revelations. Many of us are moving about with angels that are dormant because price you have not paid. Your angels are just there. Dormant, not activated. And the dream, Genesis 20, verse 12, he dreamed and ladders set up on the earth and the top of it reached to heaven and behold, what was that? The angels of God doing what? Ascending and descending. Not descending and ascending. They have always been around. But they needed a passion, an expression of passion to trigger access. Am I communicating? Number two, and then I'll pray. The Bible says, And Elijah overtook here at the entrance of Jezreel. If you must enjoy speed, this is a prayer time now. You must pray against near success syndrome. Near! There are many people that get so close, but they never get close. You know, there are people who are always very close. The Bible says concerning Esau, when Jacob had collected the blessing from his father, he said, Jacob had scarcely gone out. Genesis 27 verse 30. Jacob had scarcely gone out when he's okay. Near success syndrome. And it came to pass, Genesis 27 30, as soon as Isaac had made an end of blessing Jacob, that Jacob was yet scarce gone out from the presence of his father Isaac that Esau his brother some of us always close you are always close how what is the strength of near success syndrome distraction do you know there are so many of us now what is distracting us is depths you are owing left right you are depressed, you cannot pray. You cannot seek God. You cannot be free. Debt is a distraction. Distraction. John chapter 20, if you read from verse 3 down to 6, two disciples started running. One outran Peter. They were going to where the body of Christ was laid. One outran Peter, John chapter 20. The Bible says, when he got, okay, let's read from verse 3, 3 to 6. Peter therefore went and the other disciple and came to the sepulcher. Verse 4. They, so they both ran. 
Now, now originally, verse 3 is supposed to be verse 4. And verse 4 is supposed to be verse 3. Do you get that? Because verse 3 is telling you that they already got to the sepulcher. Verse 4 is telling you how the journey began. Verse 3, the end product. Verse 4, and that's why you must understand scriptural interpretation. This is where people make mistakes. Are you following what I'm talking about? Not knowing the writers of the Bible did not write it sequentially. They, write, they, they wrote, they had to put punctuations and all of that so that you can have a proper understanding. So they both ran together. The other disciples did outrun Peter and came first to the sepulcher. Verse 5. And he is stooping down by the entrance, stooping down, looking in. They, now, the plan was to go in. When he got to the entrance, he stopped and looking in, saw the linen clothes lying, yet wet not in. He already overtook Peter. Look at what happened in verse 6. Then Peter comes, then comes and Peter following him, went in to the sepulchre. He entered first before he looked at the clothes. One looked at the clothes without entering. One entered before looking. Distraction. <laughs> that wrong relationship. Distraction. Wrong influences. Distraction. So many of us are bound now with distractions. We are yoked with distractions. We are close to assessing dimensions with God. But we are being distracted with unserious lifestyle. A pastor has been in ministry for, like, see, look at the pastor. He has been in ministry for 18 years, 19 years, 20 years, and his church is not growing, and he's drinking. Twenty-five years of ministry, no impact, and he's still addicted to alcohol. Can you see on seriousness? Some of those who should be planning to crucify himself on the cross. That twenty-five years of ministry, nothing is working, and he's still high on drugs. One of the reasons people fail is because they don't, they don't flog them. <laughs> Take your seat. Many girls would have been married by now if during weekend they flog all single people. They say every Saturday, everyone that is up to 35 not married, 15 strokes. Any young man that is a graduate, 10 years, no job, 25 stroke every Monday. I'm telling you, you will see self-employed. People will do anything and call it a job. Because nobody, nobody. I mentor people. If you are submitting to the grace of God on my life, I won't take money from you. I won't take tithe from you. There's nothing you want to give me that God has not given me. But I will have problem with you if you are not growing. Now we will have problem. We will have problems. One of my sons, I think from the north, he sends me his attendance, attendance, and I will speak a word. 180, I will speak a word. 190, speak a word. 210, speak a word. After a while, he noticed I wasn't replying him. After three services, he said, Dad, you don't reply. I said, you should know why. What is 210 from 210 to 70? Why will I reply you? I don't reply things like that. I will reply you. You should be angry. What is going on? He said, eh, people went to market. I said, son, call me. Let me tell you something. When things are happening, people forget market. We have never, in fact, in this place, we don't know if there's a market. We don't know if there's a market. And I'm being honest. 
we don't know if market there's any market no when things are happening people reschedule church does not fall on market day it is market that fall on church day Dr. Fide, they met Jesus. Why did you heal this man on a Sabbath day? It's not good to walk. And Jesus said, you don't understand. Sabbath day, nothing is supposed to work. It is the demon that is at work in this man that I came to stop from walking. <laughs> this man is bound. So I'm not the one who broke the law. It's the demon. I'm the Lord of the Sabbath. The demon is not supposed to be walking. So I came to tell the demon of the past, get out because today is a Sabbath day. Am I communicating now? A man, a man's wife is buried. You think you remember the market? And that, that provoked him and his wife. They started praying and crying to God. I saw that. 320, 316, 30. He said, Dad, I don't know which to send us. Everywhere is packed. I said, I'd like to reply these kind of messages. I said, Fatherhood is progression. I can't father you, and one year you are still the same, two years. Look for another father. My father in the Lord was talking to me and my wife, and she, he said one word that hit my spirit. And I kept that word. Is he struggle in ministry? A hey, son of a devil, you won't do that. <laughs> that word hit me. I tell people who say they are submitted to me, I say, if you are successful, you are successful genuinely. You are my product. You are failing, look for your father. Because I will tell you what I do, tell you what I did, tell you how I did it. I will tell you what I'm not even supposed to tell you. I know what men of God do. They keep their secrets. Oh, you think they will keep their secrets? Keep their encounters? They will give you paraphernalia. Just tell you the tip, the tip, the tip. And yet you are still failing. You cannot fail after now. That's why October conference, minister's conference is, is, is one of the most outstanding conferences ever. October minister's conference, one of the most outstanding minister without blemish conference ever. Because of the kind of word that heaven has put in my spirit. Near success syndrome. Are you ready to pray? That that thing that makes you get close but never touch it. People promise you to call you but they never call you. They make, please hear me now. They make promises on their own. All of a sudden you are chasing them for promises they made on their own. That devil is a bastard. After now, every promise made to you shall be fulfilled. 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 If you are the one I'm talking to, let me hear your amen. If you are the one I'm talking to, let your amen sound like thunder. I was praying, and the Spirit of God was talking to me about so many of you who are presently distracted. What is distraction? Distraction is Satan's search for your attention. It's when the devil is searching for your attention. Allah saprakatayash. We're going to pray. I've always told you God can do all things, but God will do nothing except a man prays. God can do all things. But he would do nothing because the things of the spirit are always demanded for. You must place a demand. Without demand, effort is in futility. Following God without passion and demand is charismatic affliction. 
following God without passion and demand is charismatic affliction. You must play. The garment was there, fallow, lifeless, until she said, if I can touch, demand. Oh, la sabbataya. Are you ready? That devil of near success syndrome. There are people, the, the near success syndrome they experience is even spirit, remotely spiritually connected. Some of them, once something good is about to hit them, they see cobwebs. So they are pulling things from their face. They can't, but they know there's an overwhelming presence. Some people, it must be a dream. Once they see that dream, no matter the promises made to them, some must be, it must be some form of encounter. Somebody told me something that struck me. He said, anybody who proposes to marry her, when she said that, I, I, was, I felt very angry before praying for her. Look, I was touched. If anybody proposes to marry her, there's an encounter. When they, both of them are talking on the phone, if the phone falls on the other end, that is the end of the relationship. He says, sir, when it happened once, I said, um, not coincidence. He stopped calling me. Sir, the third one, say second time, the third one, said, they were doing a video call. All of a sudden, the phone fell. The guy didn't come back. That was the end. He said, once the phone falls. I said, okay, didn't you tell others, to, please, oh, don't let your phone fall, oh. He said, daddy, even if you tell them, it will still fall. God, this thing is spiritually connected. Once it drops, he said, that is the end. Are you ready to pray? Uh -huh. If all the promises made to you were fulfilled by now, all the promises made to you, Stop blaming people who promised you. Blame what is fighting you. Handle it. Just leave them alone. Just handle it. Handle it in prayer. Don't blame them. They are not to, 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 to make that promise to you. They wished you well. They wished you well. But something looked at you and is asking in your family who has broken this record. Where are you going? Where are you going? Where are you going? Are you ready? Uh -huh. Are you ready? Yes, sir. I told you the story of... <laughs> Let me keep that. There are some things I share with some of you now. You just collapse on your chair. When people sit down and they are telling me spiritual battles. Now, I've been in the warfare I understand warfare, but there are some things I hear to now. I'll be looking at them. Can you hear me, sir? I said, I can hear you. I can hear you. There's a town called, if you are familiar with a Doe state, there's a town called Ake on one east. There was a lady I picked by prophecy some years ago. Anytime a pregnancy gets to nine months, nine months, they carry her to the hospital. She will go into labor. They will see the head of the baby. As the head is coming out, the baby disappears. Now, when the doctor check her, it will be confirmed that her body has repelled a baby. What that means is that it shows that her body has released a child. But the problem now is, where is the child? No, that is when people are talking about miracle money, a manifestation i don't have business with you you're not spiritual we have seen things worse so there are powers somebody was, was working in chevron in worry and we're about to make him the regional manager the next week so the people that came to prepare the ground for their boss coming from from abroad they came, they were white people. They were to make him the regional manager the next week. And they came. So one of them called him. He took his time before he came. So that one came and said, why are you acting so stupid? We are here because of you. We are here to prepare the ground. He said, what did you say? He said, you are acting stupid. Me.
he went to his office, wrote his resignation letter. Oh, you both come to my country and insult me. I'm done. Over 20 years of working. He vexed. That was not a vexing. You, you, me. And you were to be promoted. Not that you were not told. You were told. Satan amplified one nonsense. <laughs> you don't know this life is spiritual, and you have to be spiritual to control it, to be in charge. Nothing that, nothing physical. This is spiritual. There are things you don't know. And this this talk of what a man doesn't know will not kill him. Nine go kill him. Not the mass are clean. Wait, the person, no, no, no. Wait, the person, no, no. Now, in the killer. So, you better know my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. The pitching translation of that scripture is wait, the person, no, no. Now, in the killer. That's the pigeon English. You know, there are some scriptures that have pidgin English. Have you read the pidgin English Bible? Oh my God, you will laugh. I read Romans 12. He said, I beseech you by the mercies of God. Pidgin English, I take God, beg you. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Try and get the pidgin. You will laugh your heart out. They broke it down in worry. <laughs> Worry English. I take God beg you. So you have to know. Life is spiritual. Spiritual. You have seen things happen. And that's why if you must if you arrest it, if you address it in the spirit, you arrest it in the flesh. Who's ready to pray? Uh -huh. We're going to take this prayer for 10 minutes. Whether it's a distraction. Whether it's a demonic attack, every devil of near success syndrome, your time is up. Break your hold. When you say break your hold, you are saying your power over me is destroyed. I break your hold. Strongholds. Every devil of near success syndrome. Somebody say, My father, my father. My father, my father. Shout it loud and clear. My father, my father. Let the devil hear your voice. My father, my father. In the name of Jesus. Name of as Jesus. I begin to pray. Begin to pray. Every, power Every power of near success syndrome. Near success syndrome. In, my In my life and destiny. I break your hold. I break your hold. I break your hold. Open your mouth and fire prayers. Yasakaba Rakotaliaga Rasadaya Rekosata Rekoso Rakaya Rokoso Koso Rakata 
Rosa, 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 Rosa,
In Jesus' name. Amen. The hand of God came upon Elijah. And he ran. He outran. The hand of God facilitates speed. God will place his hand on someone now. <laughs> Where others could not assess in years and centuries. The portals of such destinations are about to be open to you. Amen. An uncommon access. Uncommon access. Amen. Uncommon access. Amen. My father, lift your hands. Lift your hand. The power of God is very heavy here. My affections I pour out. My eyes release out tears as I behold the beauty of you, love. As I behold the beauty of speed is about to be released. Now, some shall get it ministerially. For ministry some shall get it for finance some shall get it for their health some shall get it for their social life Amen. some will get it for their career Amen. lift those hands up is that it i know when it will arise the world will know that my redeemer leaves I know my redeemer leave it. I know he's not far from me. Oh. I know when you will arise, the world will know that my redeemer leave it. I know my redeemer leave it. Listen. Listen, there are 119 people. As we are doing this, the hand of God for speed will be laid upon you. Some of you are going to feel a hand, a literal hand, resting on your forehead. Some are going to feel a wind blow over them. I know when it will arise. The world will know that my Redeemer leaveth. I know my redeemer leave it. I know it's not far from me. I know when he will arise. The world will know 